And we are live. Welcome back, brothers and sisters, my friends. Today, we're going to be talking about how marriage is your secret ministry. So if you're married, then this definitely applies to you. If you're single and you're praying about somebody, this definitely applies to you. If you're not married yet, but have a boyfriend or girlfriend, then and you're praying if they're the one for you, then this definitely applies for you. Remember friends, there are study notes down in the comments or in the subject. We're making those for free available. So if you wanted to use this study in your own home or in a Bible study with a group of friends or with family, feel free to use it. You can use the video accompanying it or you can just take the notes and lead that study yourself. In Ephesians 5 to 25, it reads, wives, be subject to your own husbands as to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, as Christ also is the head of the church. He himself being the savior of the body. But as the church is subject to Christ, so also the wives ought to be to their husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself up for her. I'm going to read that first part again. Wives, be subject to your own husbands as to the Lord, for the husband is the head of the wife, as Christ also is the head of the church, he himself being the savior of the body. So God is the savior of the body, right? Jesus was the savior of the body of Christ. And the term and the word here that is subject is actually a compound word from two Greek words, ipotasso, which the first one, ipo, meaning under, and tasso, meaning to place in order or to arrange. So a lot of people have misinterpreted this Bible verse as meaning, oh, it's unequal because the husband is higher than the woman. And it's not like that at all. It is, in fact, it's just a positional thing where the Apostle Paul is saying that the husband is ahead. It's not necessarily that they're not equal. They're both equal in the eyes of God. But there's a positioning, there's an order to it. Now, I run a photography company, videography company. And when we go out to shoots, as the creative director, I'm in charge of leading the shoot. And when I lead the shoot, the vision comes from me. I give the task to everybody else. And then the followers will go and execute that task with my help as well. So we're all equal in the field. However, I'm giving the orders. I'm giving the direction, I'm letting them know, hey, we need to do this, this needs to get done. And then the other shooters come together and we're able to accomplish the artistic direction that our clientele wants or that we're commissioned to accomplish. And in the same manner, the husbands should share that vision, should lead that vision. And in order to accomplish that together, one of the things especially that men need is respect. So it's not enough to just do it, but it makes it so much easier when it's done with respect. Now, what does that look like? That looks like the first natural response that you might have as a wife to a husband. I know it's not easy saying this because it's coming from a husband and we're going to get to our part later. Okay. Because we have a big part and, and husbands have a big role in this as well and a huge responsibility as well. But let's go to, how does respect look like on a practical sense? It means watching your tone. It means not being overly critical, but encouraging, edifying. It means respecting them in public situations or not questioning them in public situations. If you do, then at least it doesn't turn into this argument in public where maybe your husband is trying to lead you in a certain direction and you're just, you're just going at it, right? That's, that's never a good look. It doesn't feel right. It doesn't feel right for anybody. So maybe in that public setting, go with the flow and then talk afterwards. This isn't saying that you follow blindly without questioning anything, because obviously your first leader is God. So if your husband is asking you to do something that is against God, then obviously don't do it. Right. And what I mean by that is if your husband is asking you to sin or something like that, then your first authority is God. I truly believe that. However, if it's, if he's asking you to lead in a certain manner or wants things done in a certain way, then I think 
for every woman or wife, they should be able to challenge it. And just like any democracy, you should be able to voice your opinion and talk it through. And if at the end of the day, the husband decides, you know what, I think this is the way to go. And he's hearing from God, then to be able to put yourself in place in terms of putting yourself in the right order where, okay, he heard from God, God is telling him to do this, now I will submit to him. And that's very important because that allows the man to, to have confidence to lead. I've seen scenarios where it was the woman leading the whole time or the woman not trusting the husband to lead. And that actually reduces the confidence that the husband has in himself because number one, he feels like he doesn't have to lead. And number two, he feels like, well, maybe I'm just not suitable for leadership. And that in turn then, outside the home, affects his behavior outside of your relationship, affects his behavior towards other people. Because if he thinks, okay, well, I can't even lead my own family, my own wife, his confidence level leading in other situations, like maybe in a ministry, or maybe in a business, or maybe in other different settings, will be reduced. And that affects him, right? That affects him at work, especially those of us who are in ministry. We have to be aware that there's a battle going on and it's a spiritual battle going on. And it is the devil attacking ministers, pastors, preachers, teachers, sharing the word of God. If you have a husband or a boyfriend in that position or with that calling, then you can be sure that they will be attacked and that they will use you to attack them. You can just look back at Bible history. You can look back at history. Women, you have power, incredible power, to lift up your men or to tear them down. Look at Adam and Eve. It was Eve that was tempted, right? Satan went after Eve to tempt Eve, and then boom, Adam falls as well. Now the question is, where was Adam when Eve was being tempted? Was he busy working? Was he busy tending to the field and the garden? And sometimes as men, we can get so busy in what we're doing that we just don't have time to tend to our wives. They're our first ministry. The same way as for women, your husband is your first ministry. For men, your wife is your first ministry. And if you're not ministering to that first, then the devil can come in and attack and use her to then attack you. Then you have to go back to, okay, wait, I gotta be ministering here, right? That is your first ministry. The word love mentioned in Ephesians 5.25, it translates to a word that is agape. And a lot of us know this, it means a selfless, sacrificial love. But it was Jesus who really established this word because Jesus was the first human in history that showed us what sacrificial love was. In fact, before the New Testament, this word agape was rarely used in Greek literature. But after the New Testament, all of a sudden, it's been used so many times in different stories. So if you've heard stories of sacrificial love, it came from the story of Jesus, how he sacrificed his flesh for you and I, so that we could live free, so that we could be seen as righteous before the eyes of God, so that all of our stains, all of our sin, all of the mistakes that we've made goes to him on the cross. And now we can walk with God. We, have, we can have that relationship back with God. And it says here, husbands, Love your wives, just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself up for her. This is a sacrificial love. This means that even as men, I know a lot of us get into this work mode where I wanna get done, I wanna get things done, I wanna work. There's still a need and a time to minister, to spend time with your wife. Because if you don't, the serpent is just around the corner, tempting, speaking lies, speaking deceit, and he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And sometimes love can be seen as just listening. This is just being present, right? Because as men, we wanna fix things. We wanna fix what's broken. We wanna look for solutions, get it done, and then get back to work, get back to the important things, right? And sometimes with women, all that's needed is your presence. All that's needed is just to listen, to let them outlet. Women can be a lot more emotional than men and they process things differently. It's not just a quick fix for them. There needs to be a release of emotions so that they can calm down, 
so that they can come back to equilibrium and then everything's gonna be okay. So I've learned this the hard way, believe me, but I've learned to just sometimes sit, listen, not interrupt, not look for a solution, and just listen until there's silence. And then when there's silence, I'll ask, is there anything else? And if there's nothing else, then maybe you can present a solution or maybe share your point of view, but to listen first, to be present first, is very critical, especially when you're spending time with your wives. Because we can just be kind of gone and not present, and somehow women notice that, right? They notice whether you're being present or whether you're really there paying attention. And just being present to listen, to take it all in, is a lot, can provide comfort, can show love to your wife. Another thing that's very critical, especially for the guys and for the women as well, husbands and wives this is very important, in fact, is to find someone that you want to emulate, like find a couple or a marriage that you want to model and then talk to them, right? Talk to the husband, talk to the wife and ask for advice or in trying times, someone that you can trust, someone that you know okay, we're gonna keep this in the family, dirty laundry is not gonna get out, but someone who you can hold yourself accountable to, especially for the men. Because if you're not being accountable to somebody outside of your family, outside of your marriage, then sometimes you can lead that in the wrong path. And for me, I have accountability partners, accountability partners where I will share my heart to. And if there's something straining in the relationship, if there's something that I feel like, okay, I'm not really sure how to deal with this, I can go to someone who I want to model. I can go to someone who I know will give me wise counsel. It says in Proverbs 12, 15, the way of a fool is right in his own eyes, but a wise man is he who listens to counsel. In Proverbs 15, 22, it reads, without consultation, plans are frustrated, but with many counselors, they succeed. I know you want your marriage to succeed. I know you want your relationships to succeed. And sometimes what's necessary is having someone there to counsel you through those times so that you can have godly counsel, so you can react in a way that is godly and lead your family in a way that is godly with love and with truth. In Proverbs 31, 10 to 12, it reads, an excellent wife who can find for her worth is for above jewels. The heart of her husband trusts in her, and he will have no lack of gain. She does him good and not evil all the days of her life. You know, we talk about jewels here, and nowadays it's very common, right? You see it, jewels kind of sold everywhere on the internet, on Etsy, on Instagram. They're available at any store pretty much, department store, jewelry store, dollar store, they're everywhere, right? But back then, jewels were highly sought after and only accessible basically to the elite. And they were used for crowns, royal crowns, priestly garments, valuable artifacts, and even possessed and maintained wealth for generations to come. Like Generations would pass along these things like it was real estate, it was something very valuable because they would last a long time. They're very durable. And here it says a good wife, an excellent wife, is way more valuable than all of that. It's way more valuable than generational wealth, is more valuable than what the elites have access to, and the heart of her husband trusts in her, and he will have no lack or gain, and she will do him good and not evil for one day. No, nope, not for one day. All the days of her life. How do we do this? Well, as men, as husbands, it is our duty and our job to love and to teach and to care and to mentor and to provide and to equip them. For example, as a creative director, I would take my guys and I would teach them. If they made a mistake, I would teach them. I would correct them. If there was an angle or they had a suggestion, I would talk to them about it. I would talk to them about the composition. I would tell them which shutter speed to use and why to use it. I would tell them which aperture to use in a particular circumstance or which lens to use if you're doing a close up or if you're doing a wide angle shot. And I would talk about all of these things because it would equip them, it would teach them and slowly they would become better and better and better and better and help accomplish the vision that is being set, the task at hand, the purpose for which we are there. And you and your wife, you and your husband, you have a purpose, you have a mission here on earth. 
And if you come together just as God intended you to be, then that purpose will be accomplished. And it will be for God's glory. It will be for both of your good, your family's good, and it will be for the good of others as well and the service of others as well. In 1 Peter 3, 1 to 2, it reads, In the same way, you wives, be submissive to your own husbands, so that even if any of them are disobedient to the word, they may be won without a word by the behavior of their wives as they observe your chaste and respectful behavior. I was joking around with one of my friends who's a pastor, and I said, bro, the Holy Spirit really speaks through my wife. And he said, me too, bro. Holy Spirit really speaks through my wife. And I said, sometimes it doesn't stop, bro. <laughs> sometimes the Holy Spirit is just overflowing. <laughs> and we know that, right? It's, it, we both laughed at it, you know, and he said, yeah, sometimes the faucet just keeps on going. And it's very true, right? Sometimes men, we don't have as many words as women. And you're wondering, is the faucet broken? Like, do I need to call the plumber? Because that water is just nonstop. Women can really go on and go on. I'm not saying that in a derogatory way. It's just true, right? Men sometimes don't have as many words and women sometimes will never run out of words. And here, Peter's saying, you know, if they've been disobedient, that you can win them over without a word and your behavior will win them over, right? The Holy Spirit will speak to your husband, believe it or not, even if you don't say anything, even if you don't nag, even if you don't insult, even if you don't criticize or overly criticize. Now, I'm not saying don't ever say anything. I'm not saying don't ever speak. Women, you have the right to speak. Wives oftentimes have incredible wisdom. I, can, I can't even count, actually, how many times I've been wrong and my wife has been right. They have so much wisdom. And as men, we have to learn to listen to that and humble ourselves and go, okay, you know what, they might be right. Because most of the time they are right. And on the same token, sometimes women, sometimes we need to zip it. Sometimes we just zip it, you know? Sometimes it just needs to zip it. Sometimes we gotta just zip it. And husbands, we, we take on a lot of responsibility, right? Especially if you decide, okay, I'm gonna lead this family. There's a lot of responsibility. You gotta provide for them, you gotta make sure they're okay, you gotta make sure the future is okay, you gotta make sure there's enough food to eat, you gotta make sure all these things. Community, service, gotta teach them. There's a lot. And the wise woman will build her husband up and will build her house up. In Proverbs 14, one, it says, the wise woman builds her house, but the foolish tears it down with her own hands. Wow. It doesn't say the wise man builds his house, but the foolish tears it down with his own hands. It's the wise woman builds her house. Women, wives, you have this incredible ability to build up. And on the same token, you have the ability to tear down. Now the question is, are you gonna be like the wise woman who builds up her hus house, builds up her husband, or are you gonna be like the foolish one who tears it all down? The choice ultimately is yours. And this applies to husbands as well, right? Because we can build up our wives or we can tear them down. And that's why it's very important to remember that my wife is my first ministry. My husband is my first ministry. Out of all things that I need to take care of, I need to take care of them first. Because if I don't take care of them first, the whole house can collapse. The whole house can get torn down. Because the husband and the wife are that team. They are that one. That if they are strong, the house is strong. The family is strong. But if they are at odds with each other, then it's so much weaker. Because you're trying to go one direction, but all, the other person's going in that direction and you just, you can't, where are we going, where are we going? And it just takes so much longer to get there because you're divided, right? You're divided. And so be like the wise man, be like the wise woman who builds up her husband, builds up her wife. And you know what it is. For people, it's gonna be different. We all have different personalities. So how you are with your wife is gonna be different than how I am and how someone is with their house husband is gonna be different based on the personality. And if you've been with someone long enough, you know, well, this will build them up, this will tear them down. And it's case by case basis, it's gonna be different for every single person, right? But at the end of the day, we're empowered because of what Jesus has done for us on the cross. We're empowered because Jesus set that model for us as husbands to, to sacrifice ourselves, to love them as Jesus loved the church. 
And my question to you ending this is, who is Jesus to you? Because Jesus said he's the son of God. He said he's the Messiah, the Christ. He said he is the I am, equating himself with God. The Bible says he is the beginning and the end. He is the Alpha and the Omega. He is the Prince of Peace that every tongue will confess, that every knee will bow, that he is Lord. And if that's you, then I challenge you to receive him as your Lord, as your Savior today. If this has helped you out, please let me know in the comments below. Please share it with others. Again, there are study notes. I hope this has helped. If there's any feedback, I would love to hear from you. Again, your husband is your first ministry. Your wife is your first ministry. So build them up. God bless you. Keep Jesus first. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.